Okay, let's get started. Okay, um, uh, we get the, uh, we uh, get started. Uh, good, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, the first word I would like to um, to give the thanking was uh, to uh, to uh, you all uh, for joining the the web webinar on station crowding design analysis uh, using uh, Simrich software uh, today. I am uh, Thuc Bo from BSCF uh, company. Yeah, uh, co-host with me uh, today uh, from Eaton Electric. Uh, I would like to introduce. Mr. Nguyen Hai Yung from uh, Eastern Vietnam. Uh, Mr. Sebastian the friend uh, uh, from uh, Eaton, Singapore. And Mr. Uh, Richard from Eaton, US. Uh, I, um, uh, I hope to uh, receive, uh, receive more uh, questions and I hope uh, we have a nice discussion uh, for, for the topic today. Thank you. Okay. Rất là cảm ơn anh uh, anh thức đã uh, phối hợp với Ethan uh, giới thiệu mọi người. Chắc Dương uh, nói nhanh qua bằng tiếng Việt để mọi người nắm. Thì cũng bắt đầu từ tháng tư là Ethan và PSTS đã đồng hành cùng với các anh chị và các bạn uh, trong một uh, chuỗi hội thảo. Thì uh, rất cảm ơn anh chị đã ủng hộ và đồng hành. Thì ngày hôm nay thì Ethan rất là hân hạnh. Thì có uh, một uh, chuyên gia từ bên Mỹ. Thì bây giờ hiện tại thì bên đấy thì đang đang khoảng giờ chắc là đâu đó là khoảng 9 hay là 10 giờ đêm thì cũng kết nối vào Việt Nam để cùng với anh chị thực hiện cái session về tính toán nối đất cho trạm điện thì hy vọng trong quá trình buổi chuyên ninh thì anh chị có câu hỏi gì thì mình cũng hoàn toàn có thể thoải mái hỏi luôn hoặc là có thể đặt câu hỏi trong phần chat box thì sau đó thì bên Dương sẽ tổng hợp lại và trao đổi cùng với các chuyên gia À, xin cảm ơn. Thì chắc là để không mất thời gian thì Dương sẽ bắt đầu luôn. So, uh, thank you, uh, Richard. We can uh, start, start now. Okay, good. All right. Uh, all right, so uh, brief introduction. <laughs> well, uh, my name is, uh, is Richard Dorian. I've been with working with Sam for a long time, <laughs> 33 years. And I'm basically responsible for the uh, substation grounding program. Uh, well, one of my tasks actually is to do this. Uh, is you know taking care of the substation program, program uh, getting the roadmap, and any new development we need to do to improve the software capabilities. I, I, I handle this. I have one question. If somebody can answer me. Uh, it, I'm, I mean, I would like to show you a bit about the grounding theory, but I will not really spend too much time on it because I don't want people to, uh, I would like to show what the software does really, all right? Uh, so having said that, has anybody, I mean, if you can ask a question maybe in English or in Vietnamese that has anybody of the audience that is uh, attending, is he familiar with the, the concept of grounding? I just want to have a feel of how many people are familiar with this concept, that's all. Can we get that information? Ở câu hỏi này chắc là cũng nhờ thức check với cùng với các anh chị thì hiện tại bác Lý chắc cũng chuẩn bị một chút các giới thiệu một chút về theory nhưng mà bác Lý cũng muốn là tập trung nhiều về cái phần mềm giới thiệu tới các anh chị hơn. Thì bác có một câu hỏi đó là không biết là trong số các anh chị có nhiều anh chị đã quen với phần mềm mà tính toán về phần tiết địa này hay chưa? Thì chắc là nhờ thức thử trả lời giúp cho câu hỏi này. Mr. Richard some Uh, some uh, some uh, consultant uh, commonly in Vietnam, uh, we we have we have uh, uh, use some um, uh, some 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 software for uh, um, for analysis and design a substation ground increase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's let's start then with the with the program. I mean, I'm just going to go through it. You know, first of all. Uh, b before we do that, I'm just going to talk a bit about what the grounding uh, uh, concept is, just very quickly. Oh, I'm just putting off my phone so that nobody bothers me.
All right, so what is grounding? Well, in, in uh, what are we looking for in grounding? You know, when somebody, when you have a fault on the system, what will happen to the voltage of all this metallic? Uh, uh, by the way, Sebastian, I just want to ask you a question. Is it going to be a, a translation every time I talk, or is it going to be, uh, is not going to be that? I mean, is there going to be translation every time I talk about the software, or are we just uh, going to go? Uh, and at the very end, people will ask questions. Um, I, I guess probably John would, would jump in at some specific moment to summarize okay. some of the key points. So okay. Okay. he will yes. he will signal if, if he needs to jump in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can focus on the presentation. And when I need to stop, I will inform you, Richard. Okay, great. Fantastic. So so when you have a metallic uh, uh, so when you when you touch a metallic uh, structure like a transformer, so what will happen is that when you have a ground fault, all the all the metallic structure will go to a voltage called uh, ground potential rise. It's because everything is connected to the ground grid, and this will cause because you have a current multiplied by the resistance of the ground. So you get a voltage called GPR. So all the metallic structures here will be at GPR, ground potential rise, which is the voltage. Now, if you are touching it and you're standing on the surface, because the surface, as you can see, is, uh, will, get, will get some voltage, uh, induced voltages on all the surface where the person is are standing. So there is a voltage, let's say, of 4,000 volts here where he's standing. And this probably the ground potential rise will be something like 5,000 volts. The difference is 1,000. So you, there is the touch potential because you're touching it of 1,000 volts across your body. So this is touch. Step is the other way around where you're walking and it's the voltage between your feet, left foot and right foot with a distance of one meter. And we transfer also, SimGrid can model the transferred voltages as well. These, and these are really special cases, but uh, then, I mean, uh, if somebody is leaning like this on the transformer, <laughs> I don't think that happens a lot. Neither with this one case, because these things might be too far away. But anyway, we always consider it's touch and step and transferred voltages. Now, there's a formula somebody found that the square of the body current is not the, the short circuit current. It's your body current multiplied by the time of exposure you have to the, to the short circuit. I, I mean, um, when you touch it, when you touch the metallic structure, this is your touch time. And it equals SB. So if you square this times this time, you get a certain constant, which they found to be 0 0.0135 for 50 kilograms and for 70 it was 0 0.0246 so you can calculate k because it's the square root of sb and this is the body current so i, I body is 0 0.116 over square root of ts so suppose ts is one second one so this will be 116 milliamps so it doesn't take a lot of current to kill a human being you know if your weight is 50, if your weight is 70, then it's going to be a bit higher, 157 million. And so on and so forth. But this is the standard. The IEEE standard is the most that we use. I mean, the program can cover more standards, but this is the one that we has been used uh, internationally quite a bit. It's the most complete document, really. The document is very, very complete, uh, the standard, which is the IEEE standard 80-2013. 2015, actually, the revision. So, having said that, you know, they did this experiments on, on, per, on, not on human beings, they used animals like pigs, sheep, and so on. Uh, when they did this experiment, they found that the current, certain current will, uh, will kill a pig, and the pig has a very good heart anatomy as very close to the human being, especially its valves. You know, in the old days, they used to take the valve of a human a pig and, put, and stick it in a human. Uh, that is why they, they conducted it on such animals. Now, so the human body, they assume in the IEEE standard that it's close to 1,000 ohms. That's the human body resistance. Its foot resistance 
of each, we can assume it as, uh, as if the foot can be modeled as a plate. So the foot resistance of each of the human being is raw. It's the resistivity of the, of the soil that you are standing on over four times B, where B is the uh, radius of the plate. That is equivalent to the area of the foot zone. So we make an equivalence and say that the foot is almost a plate, a circular plate with radius B, which is typically 0 0.08. You do the calculation, so you get each foot resistance is three rho ohms. Rho, it could be the surface potential, uh, surface resistivity could be 100 ohms. So each foot will be 300 ohms. This is the, the, first, the first thing we need to know. Now, the current through the human body will be I, I, I body is V tevenant over R equivalent plus R body. So what is R equivalent here and the R body? R body we know is a thousand. So if you want to get the touch potential, if you're standing next to each other, your feet are parallel. So the resistance is half. So if you put this, so E touch will be I body into R body, I body current, uh, resistance of the body plus 1.5 rho foot. These are the resistance of the feet because if you have them in parallel, then the equivalent is divided by two, is to take the RF over two. On the other hand, when you're walking, your feet are in series, so we need to add them up. So the resistance will be two RF. So six rho here. They're very, they're very much similar equations, except this is six rho. It means that you can. So this is like, if you, it's, again, if it's 100 ohms that you're standing on, 100 ohm uh, meters that you're standing on, it will be 600 ohms, six, uh, six ohms, 600 ohms, sorry. And this will be only 150 ohms. All right, so this is what, what, what we, 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 we touch. What is the touch potential? What is the touch circuit? And what is the step circuit? This is the grounding. I mean, everything is grounded. And we, we, we need to compute, uh, basically this is what happened. Everything is grounded and this is a ground grid. We need to find out this grid and then we go to the program basically, uh, how to build this grid to have a safe design. And this is the same grid grounding analysis, from, you know, the brochure. And I will not waste too much time on this presentation. I can always, you know, I guess, I guess Sebastian has it. He can pass it on to you guys, no problem. But I really would like to, to, to start uh, looking at the program. So, okay, um, uh, Richard, uh, can you uh, for a bit of theory uh, so I can summarize a bit uh, in local language? Uh, yes, giới thiệu với các anh chị thì uh, thực ra thì uh, các cái phần lý thuyết này thì cũng có, có thể rất là nhiều anh chị đã nắm được nhưng mà Dương cũng muốn uh, tóm tắt uh, một chút thì uh, dựa trên phần mềm SimGrid để mọi người thấy rằng là Sim uh, phân của Eton cũng xuất phát từ các cái nền tảng cơ bản là Hàn Lâm và khoa học thì cũng căn cứ thực ra thì có thể môn này rất là tương đương với môn an toàn điện trong trường đại học thì lúc đấy sẽ khi đặt cái mục tiêu là an toàn của người vận hành và các nhân viên lên hàng đầu nên là khi mà ở các cái trạm điện người ta đã tính toán đến rất nhiều khả năng từ cho điện áp bước cho điện áp tiếp xúc và cũng như là điện áp chuyển tiếp hay thậm chí là những trường hợp mà mình vô tình mình tựa vào máy biến áp hay là mình uh, tiếp xúc giữa hai phần kim loại trong phần trạm điện và từ đấy người ta tính toán và dựa trên uh, những cái khả năng nào xảy ra nhiều nhất và cũng như tính toán tất cả các cái trường hợp và người ta thấy rằng là căn cứ nhiều vào các cái phần điện áp tiếp xúc và điện áp bước thì để uh, tính toán uh, uh, cho cái hệ thống tiếp điện thì cũng căn cứ vào các cái cơ sở nền tảng về các cái cơ thể con người khả năng chịu đựng cứng tính vào cái số cân thì tùy vào người châu Á người châu Âu nhưng mà các ngành người ta cũng dựa vào các cái tiêu chuẩn IEEE các cái tiêu về tự nhiên mọi người có thể thấy là người ta tính trên khoảng 50 kg hay 70 kg các cái hệ số rồi từ đó các cái tính toán về uh, trở kháng của con người hay điện trở kháng mà khi dùng chân thì từ đó uh, người ta đưa ra cái phương thức tính toán mà ở các cái thiết bị cần phải được nối đất và nối đất với một hệ thống như thế nào và được tính toán ra làm sao để có thể hài hòa được tất cả các yếu tố cũng như là design ở cái mức độ vừa phải và phù hợp với các cái kinh phí thì đấy chính là các cái mục đích của cái phần mềm tại vì có những trường hợp mà mình đặt cái hệ số an toàn cao quá nhưng mà thì khi đấy cái chi phí design sẽ rất là đắt thì chính vì việc vậy có những cái công cụ như thế này để giúp cho mình có thể tối ưu được các cái chi phí tính toán vừa đảm bảo được an toàn nhưng mà cũng phù hợp với cái bác sĩ của uh, uh, dự án thì uh, chính sau đây chúng ta sẽ đi trực tiếp cụ thể vào trong các cái phần mềm thì cũng uh, uh, nhắc lại là trong cái quá trình đấy thì anh chị có câu hỏi nào muốn chưa sâu thì cứ nhắn vào trong cái phần chat box thì uh, phần team sẽ quay trở lại. Đã, xin cảm ơn anh chị.
Uh, hi Richard, you can continue. Okay. All right, so let's go to the program now and 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 look at this thing to to see how we can uh, get all these things together. All right. So the first thing we need to do when we when we're trying to uh, do with these uh, uh, with the with the program is you know we have to open a new project. Let's say the study is you know sub one. My substation is one. And my project is called, uh, you know, a new installation, for example, install. So this is my sub. Now, the, the, now the program will become, you know, more. You can it becomes more accessible because before, if you don't do this, there's nothing really to uh, to access. So the first thing we do is we open a project. You know, so you can save it. You can open your old project and so on and so forth. So these are typical Windows types of. Uh, commands, view, there's nothing to view then, there's no global report, units, of course, I can use either the American system or the international system, or oh, sorry, the, uh, what is it, uh, the uh, uh, imperial, which is the British standard or the American, I guess, sometimes, and then this is the, the metric is the international one that they came up with. So we are going to use metric, meters and so on. Soil measurements, and parameters, resistivity and resistance, grid, parameters. These are the most important ones. So, soil and grid table, you know, zoom in, zoom out, windows, close all, help is the read me and the about. That's really what, what, what it is, uh, uh, the soil. I mean, these really are very, very, these are the ones that really are very important, the soil measurements and the grid parameters. And you, I will explain to you how we can build these. Now, before I go, I'm just going to talk a bit about how we do the soil measurements, all right? Uh, when we do measurements, like this one, the, the, the most common one is this one, the Wenner 4-4 method. So what you do in this system, and then probably I'll stop so that you can explain, is we inject current until we get voltage readings. You divide V over I, like here, you know, V over I, you get the resistance, all right? So what happens now when you inject the current, the, uh, and the distance between the voltage and the pr uh, current probes is always the same, A, 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 as you can see. That's the beauty of the Wenner method. So you divide, so what will happen when the current will go into the ground and will go to an apparent depth equal to the spacing, A. So this will, the current will go this way. And remember, this is this is the depth of the rods that you have put B, which is very, very small compared to A. I mean, this could be like 10 centimeters or five centimeters. And this distance A would be two meters. So B is normally much, much less than A, the depth of the rods that you put in. You know, you pound the rods, you put your leads of the voltage and you put your leads of the, vo of the current here, you inject the current and you get the voltage. V over I is the equation, right? So, but they found for this kind of method, the general formula is to get the resistivity because you're not looking for resistance. We want to find the resistivity of the earth. So applied source resistivity in ohm meters, R is the measured resistance, A is the distance between adjacent electrodes in meters, and B is the depth of the electrodes in meters. So all this is, is there for you. If you plug in those numbers, but you see that since B is much, much less than A, all this term below, 1 plus 2a or becomes 1 plus 2a, this one you neglect, becomes a squared, so square root of a squared is a. So 1 plus 2a over a minus a over a. <laughs> so it's 1 plus 2 minus 1. So we're left with 2. 4 pi a r over 2 is 2 pi a r. So the resistivity in this method is very simply 2 times pi times the distance times the resistance, which is v over i. You want to you wanna explain this? Because this is really important <laughs> now. Okay, I think you can continue. Okay. I we can? have a okay. question. Uh, yeah. Okay. So when you have, well, whatever, you know, you just let me know. Okay, I can continue. So, so this is the, the most common method. There's another method, but I'll send it to uh, Sebastian. You can pass it on, you can read it. But this is the most common 
method to do, uh, you know, to, to get the measurement. So what do we do in SimGrid? In this case, so we need to enter the soil parameters. And like I said, I'm using two layer soil model. It means that the program will compute for me uh, this one. I'm just going to show you these two layers. The program is going to compute for me row one, the upper resistivity, its depth, and the lower resistivity all the way down to infinity. So he's computing this resistivity and this resistivity and H. It's a very complex way of doing it, but I will not show you the equation. It's quite, quite big, you know, but anyway, I'll just go somewhere else here then. Okay, well, I'm going to go back to here later on. So two layers soil from measurements we're trying to get. It's not uniform. You see, if the measurements are very close, you can say, okay, uniform soil. We can assume it's uniform. So we do the average because you can have this, this equation as an average of all the measurements, or it's user defined. It means you can enter whatever values you want. If somebody tells you this is 100 and this was 50 ohm meters and the depth was, let's say, five meters and the ambient temperature, temperature outside was, let's say, 25 degrees. But we are not going to use that. We're going to use the two layer soil for measurements. At the same time, you can define what we call the surface layer material. The surface layer material is simply this one. There is a material, rho SHS, on top, which is like the asphalt, crushed rock, or gravel, or whatever material that is there on the substation. Normally, you have this. So you have the crushed rock, then the H of the upper layer. It's resistivity, we call it now rho, not rho one for some reason, and then rho two is going to infinity. But this is the exact model now where you have the H. So when you say tolerable touch voltages, now this is the body current multiplied by the resistance, which is 1000. You remember we had 1.5 rho S and 1.5 rho here. Now it's the surface rho S because you're standing on the surface. And CS is what we call the uh, uh, correction factor because because you're standing here you're not going to take the full advantage of this high resistivity material this is normally 2500 ohm meters let's say this would be 100 and this could be 100 or 50 you know something like that normally it's less but it doesn't have to be but since you're standing some of the current will go into here as well so you're not taking full advantage of this uh, resistivity of this high resistance, resistivity, high resistivity soil or material. And that is why we have what we call a, a, a reduction factor or a derating factor. So we derated this a bit by a factor of CS, which is basically something less than one. So this is the full touch and step voltage for 70 and 50 kilograms, buddy. All right. So and this is what the program does. So I ask you, what is the surface layer? It's user defined. I have crushed rock or whatever it is, but let's say it's user defined and I have 25 ohm meters, 2,500 ohm meters. And this is the, the, the raw S here. Its depth is very small, it's normally in the 10 centimeters. So we enter here, uh, let's say 0 0.15, 15 centimeters. This is its resistivity. Shock duration is how much, typically in the standard, they say 0 0.25, 0 0.5. The more you put, the less you will tolerate. So typically it's 0 0.5 seconds. You assume that the fault has, the, you know, has gone. And body weight, is it 50 or 70? Because the standard says body weight of 50 or 70. It doesn't. So the more you weigh, the better it is. But they use 50, then you're on more conservative side. But why do they use these 50, 70 numbers? Because, uh, you know, they, they assume that most of the animals that they did uh, are way like this, you know, 50, 70 kilograms. But also they come in mind that they think about children not running into the uh, substation. Okay. For mm, Hadija, can I? Uh, yeah. yeah. Go uh, ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, because I have a question from uh, the participants, so I want to uh, bring up here. But uh, the first question... Um, uh, Okay. Uh, đầu tiên là uh, mình có một câu hỏi từ của một anh đó là uh, 
cách xử lý tiếp địa với khu vực có điện trở suất lớn thì thực ra là trong cái phần hướng dẫn này của bác Richard thì cũng đã đề cập đó là những khu vực chất xuất lớn là coi như là mình đã hình dung được là các cái vật liệu và các cái cách thức mà mình à, tiến hành tiếp địa ở khu vực đó thì trong phần mềm sim grid ở đây lúc mà các anh chị có thể theo dõi lúc bác uh, Richard làm thì là đã có thể phân chia phần ví dụ như là mình có thể thấy trên màn hình đó là cái hệ uh, mô hình về các cái hệ thống mà ví dụ như là mình uh, xây dựng ví dụ như là các cái sỏi đá như một lớp hai lớp hay ba lớp thì căn cứ vào các cái yếu tố cách thức xây dựng như vậy thì nó sẽ quyết định về cái điện trở xuất uh, của cái khu vực đó thì mình trước hết là mình phải căn cứ vào cái cách thức mình uh, xây dựng và thứ hai lúc đấy là các cái thông số mà mình cần đặt ra thì ở đây nó có các cái bộ tiêu chuẩn ví dụ mình có thể thấy trên đó là safety parameters mình có thể căn cứ vào đấy mình theo IEEE và mình có thể tra cứu tới các cái tài liệu đó để mình hiểu rõ thêm thì ngoài ra thì nó cũng có một số các cái thông số thì nó cũng sẽ dựa vào các cái phần giống như là các cái bảng kinh nghiệm và các cái điều kiện cây thực tế ví dụ mọi thấy có thể là về điện áp bề mà về trở kháng của bề mặt hay là các cái thời gian về sub duration thì các thông số này mình sẽ căn cứ vào đó để mình quyết định để đưa vào cái mô hình tính toán và quan trọng nhất tiếp theo có một cái phần đó là body weight về trọng lượng của cơ thể của người mà mình tính toán thì uh, nó cũng theo tiêu chuẩn người ta căn cứ vào hai cái thông số đó là về 50 weight hay là 70 50 kg hoặc là 70 kg để mình đưa vào trong phần uh, tính toán. Thì đấy là các cái thông số mình cần uh, uh, lưu ý để khi mình đưa vào trong cái mô hình này để có sự tính toán. Thì uh, the question here is uh, uh, how can uh, uh, what we can do to help uh, the accurate design from the sim grid uh, because we see here a lot of uh, parameter so did you want a question from the participant they want uh, uh, how accurate, to, yeah how accurate are the results of sim grid right yeah? yeah correct okay so i'm going to show you something very quickly what we did in sim grid results comparison with the ieee standard okay so this is a document that we came up with. So if you go, if you go, if you scroll down, you see there's a lot of cases in the IEEE standard, like this one. All these cases, primary design, so on and so forth, uh, stitch factors, all these kind of uh, uh, case studies were in the in the are provided with the program actually. This document and and the uh, and and the uh, results are provided with this. Uh, program and the case studies. Sorry. So let's say this is the case. So we compare SimGrid to the IEEE guide. All right. All the information is there. So we compare this. There we get the resistance. Say this is the IEEE guide is 2.78. This is manual calculation. But the APRI program, which is the same, well, they use the same technique like SIME, which is the uh, uh, EPRI is the Institute of Electrical Engineering, uh, Electrical Something Research Institute of uh, in the United States. So they have a certain program and they came up with 2.67. Same grid was 2.65 to calculate the grid. All right. But this document, I mean, I think Sebastian has it and so on, comes with the program and it really gives you an idea of what we, what are the accurate, how is the accuracy of same grid compared to the standard. And we, we have very, you know, different uh, design. Uh, for example, we have something more complex like this, L-shaped design. And you can see what how SimGrid is still very close to this one. Now remember, this is hand calculation. This is actual programs. So we're very, very close with, with, all, these, with, all, the, with all these numbers, okay? Yeah, okay, thank you. I think it's very clear. So, thực ra mọi người có thể thấy đó là cái cách tiếp cận của phần mềm Sam. Thứ nhất là chúng tôi đi dựa theo các cái tiêu chuẩn. Tại vì dù gì design mình cũng đưa ra các tiêu chuẩn để có cái cơ sở hàn lâm, một cơ sở khoa học để mình dựa vào. Thì chính xác đến đâu như là mình dựa vào các cái căn cứ tiêu chuẩn. Thì uh, phần mềm sau đây thì Dương cũng sẽ gửi cho mọi người các cái tài liệu liên quan để giúp mọi người uh, có thể hiểu được và cái cách tính toán sao cho nó được chính xác. Thì bên cạnh đó thì Dương cũng có nhận được hai câu hỏi nhưng mà nó lại là hơi bên lề về một chút uh, uh, um, về phần mềm thì Dương sẽ dành hai câu hỏi đấy về phút khúc sau thì để, để đó, bác Richard tập trung vào nội dung chính của buổi học đó là giới thiệu cho mọi người cái cách tính toán tiếp địa cho cái trạm điện thì còn hai câu hỏi về cái hệ thống nối đất chống xét và các câu hỏi về xả tính điện thì Dương sẽ nốt lại và trả lời anh chị sau có thể là trong cuối buổi ngày hôm nay À, còn đâu trước mắt thì mình sẽ focus vào cách thức sử dụng của phần mềm các anh chị nhé. 
Okay, so what I'm showing you now is also a very complex design where we're showing the grid and we have the fence being modeled as well. Uh, part of the fence, what is undergrounded inside. So the program can see what is the voltage being induced on the fence. Normally you have to connect the fence, but in this case, the IEEE wanted to see what is the uh, voltage induced on those uh, on this uh, structure, you know, on on the fence. So that is why we we ca calculated all those. Uh, you know, we give you also how to get this point T1, T2, T3, which is these numbers that they want. All right, and touch voltage at center of corner mesh. So so they give you points, and this is all fully documented. And you can find this if you go to SimGrid, for example, where the program is installed. If I go to uh, drive C, you go to program 586, you find under sign, you will have sim grid, let's say. You will find IEEE comparison. That's this document I showed you and all the case studies, all the actual sim grid cases that duplicates these results in this document. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thêm một cái mọi người có thể chú ý là cái list của bác ấy chính là các cái tài liệu khi mà anh chị uh, cài phần mềm mà nó có sẵn trong đấy rồi thì uh, tôi nghĩ là mọi người chú ý cái phần này thì nghĩa là link download phần mềm thì có thể người dân sẽ gửi trong chat box thì khi anh chị install thì toàn bộ các tài liệu của Sam không chỉ phần mềm này mà tất cả các phần mềm khác thì các tài liệu đều nằm ở đây sẵn rồi các anh chị chỉ việc chú ý ở cái phần uh, link ở phần trên các anh chị truy cập vào và các anh sẽ thấy các cái uh, thông số liên quan Đó, ok di chắc với các anh chị ok so so we've done this, we've, we've go, gone through this, so, but nothing yet, you know, we, we have defined all these situations. So the first thing you have to do is to come and bring your soil model. Let's say at, for, you don't start too close. Let's say one meter is the minimum you need to do. Let's say at one meter, we measure something of 120 ohm meters. You see now the measurements are being displayed here for you. If you go, sorry, this is one, one meter. Let's say we double it two, and this was goes to 140. Oh, sorry, it goes down a bit. Sorry, 110, for example, or 109. Three. Well, it goes back up again. So for some reason, that's okay. It doesn't mean anything, you know. At sorry, this make it at uh, four meters, and this double it eight meters. Remember, when we do the Wenner method, if you say four meter spacing, you are actually covering. Remember this, uh, this guy, you are actually covering 3A. So if it's say four meters, you're actually covering 12 meters of the substation because four times three. <laughs> so depending on how much you wanna go on the axes, you can have six measurement axes here, but let's say we just create one now for the purpose of this uh, uh, session. And this one goes to 102. Let's say we go to, uh, we double it 16, he's going down to 85, for example. Then we go here, let's say 24, he's going down to 65. And finally, let's say at 30 meters, he's down to 52 or 51 meters, let's say five. First, I have always to say studies. <laughs> and you see, you can do the soil analysis now. So the program, well, immediately, I'm just going to do it very, a little very quickly. Maybe I'm just going to do it again. So you see there is, I cannot do grid analysis because I don't have any grid, <laughs> no substation grid or ground grid, sorry. Because the program can handle PV installations, wind turbine installations, all kinds of installations. So if I have the grid analysis now, let me see what we can do with the, with the, with the, uh, with the analysis. I cannot do any grid. I cannot do any contour or, or profile plot. So the only thing I can do is soil analysis. So I click on it and this is what the program will tell me. If I make this one bigger, it tells me that this is what I use. I use body weight 15, surface layer so-and-so, 2,500 ohm meters and the shock duration 0.5 seconds. This is what I entered, the data I've entered. And this is what the soil, the results were that at 13.57 meters, a depth of, I, I have 116.3. Below that, I have the water table, which is like 30 ohm meters. Normally when you're at 20 or 30 or 40 ohm meters, it means you're getting close to the water table, a wet soil. My error is only 5.86%, which is very good. 
My reduction factor, remember I told you there's a derating factor CS, which is this one, uh, which is being computed now here. CS is computed for you now. Rho S is known, CS is known, because Rho S is a surface, so we can co compute the step and touch now. And that is why the program was able to give you maximum touch potential is about 643 or 644 volts. Maximum step potential is 2,883 ohms. It means you can tolerate, like I said, more between your feet than in your, in your uh, uh, arm, you know, touch. Because look at this, I mean, your, your arm is closer to your heart, really. That is why. When they tell you there is a thousand ohm uh, resistance, eh, from your heart, from your hand to your heart, there isn't that much. Well, they assume it's a hundred, but I believe it's less. That's why they, this comes into effect that you can tolerate less in touch or then you can tolerate in step. So we got 116.3, so, so we get all the results until the very end. We tell you that at one meter, I measured, uh, my measure was 120, the program computed 116. 130, it was 115, so I was 11% off, but my total error is 5.86%, which is very good. You know, up to 10%, even up to 20% is okay because these are measurements. But if you see something like this, somebody entered 1,300 here and you do the soil measurement and you see like an error of 34%, have a look, see, see, see what's going on, you know? So obviously this was a mistake. So, or, you know, sometimes when you do the measurement, it hits a, 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 a soil that is very, like a, a body, you know, it could be a big rock and it's okay, you know, but you just ignore it. You just ignore the measurement or you say, okay, do it again and it's actually 130. So that's what it is. And that's what we're going to go. It's like this model of the soil. So we have the soil model. Now we define the buses. D1. Uh, I, can I, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, can yes. I stop? Uh, I, I uh, see many questions to you, but uh, when I see your presentation, I think you already know uh, almost the participants often ask. Uh, so let me explain to you. Uh, Dương có nhận được một câu hỏi mà Dương muốn trả lời luôn, đó là một số anh chị có hỏi đó là uh, muốn lắp đặt được có collect được data vào trong phần mềm, uh, ví dụ như là địa chỉ xuất tưởng từng loại đất hay là uh, có thể được có các nhiều đầu đo thì phần mềm có hỗ trợ công cụ nào hay không? Thì mọi người có thể chú ý vào bài uh, chương trình của Bati Chat và cũng đưa trong uh, phần mềm sang có một công cụ đó là mình có thể nhập các cái kết quả mình đo được vào trong thì gọi là các kết quả mình sẽ đo là các điểm đo chứ mình không thể đo được tất cả các cái điểm ở trong hệ thống thì phần mềm cũng giúp cho mình đó là mình mô hình hóa cái điện uh, trở xuất đó thì việc mô hình hóa điện trở xuất đấy sẽ đưa cho mình một cái đường cong tương đối là chính xác thì mọi người có thể uh, uh, thấy được là cái đặc tính của cái uh, uh, vật liệu mà mình đang xây dựng ở khu vực đó nó như thế nào thì căn cứ vào đấy thì mình sẽ có kết quả uh, tương đối là chính xác Tại vì bản thân là trong lúc mình đo có những sai số của uh, uh, giống như là thiết bị đo dẫn đến như bác có đưa ra một cái khi mà mình đưa ra một cái thông số nó lớn quá thì trong cái bảng mà phân tích nó cũng có nhận biết được đó là có một cái sự sai và mình có thể bỏ các cái thông số đấy ra. Như vậy ở trong phần mềm bước đầu tiên mình làm đó là phần gọi là mình mô hình hóa và kiểm tra cái vật liệu của mình. Thì trong phần mềm có một công cụ hỗ trợ cho việc mình mô hình hóa và các cái hệ số bị trở xuất khá là chi tiết. Thì các anh chị có thể tham khảo thêm ở trong các cái phần tài liệu thì trong cái cụ thể mai sau các anh chị gặp cái cây nào đấy thì cũng có thể liên hệ lại với PFTS và Dương tại Việt Nam thì tại vì Dương thấy là trong này thì uh, các cái cây mình gặp trong thực tế khá là nhiều nhưng mà trung uh, quy nó cũng là một cái phương thức tiếp cận đó là mình đo tại các cái nhiều điểm đo uh, cho, cho các khoảng cách 1, 2, 3 hay thậm chí nhiều hơn nữa thì càng số lượng nhiều điểm đo thì kết quả càng chính xác thì việc mô hình hóa sẽ càng chính xác hơn thì uh, trong phần mềm sẽ giúp mình mô hình hóa căn cứ vào cái số lượng lấy mẫu của mình uh, được phần bao nhiêu lần thì đấy chính là cái phân cách thức tiếp cận của phần mềm Okay, Richard, you can continue. Okay, so, so the program basically tells you that he computed the soil up to, let's say, up to 30 meters here. He does the average of those. He says, okay, this is the average of those. I have computed around, uh, let's say, he says uh, 116 ohm meters. And here, he says he estimates something like 30 ohm meters. Okay, it's a very, very, I mean, it's not a, uh, it is quite a, a a complex algorithm that we have to do because you're trying to find three unknowns really you know two two resistivities and one 
and one uh, uh, depth as well. So anyway, so the program gave you these results. If you look at the buses now, we say, okay, this is 13.8 kV. Uh, my fault current, you know, my short circuit current, let's say it's 8,000 amps. My fault duration, 0 0.5 seconds. X over R ratio is of my short circuit. And that's what we, we have filled now. So once we have that, we need to do the electrode. So suppose you go to the electrode and you select maybe conductors, these four conductors and these four rods. These are in the database, right? The program will automatically compute for you the minimum size of conductor required. He tells you my area is 2.449, but in my, in my size, I have two or zero, which is AWG or half an inch for the uh, uh, rods. Now, this is really uh, dynamic because if I change the short circuit, let's say to 50,000, see, it, it changes to, sorry, 50,000, another two. Now it's three quarter inch uh, rods and two times this conductor and 19 and two times 19 so, slash number nine, right? 19 strands, nine, nine inch conductor. So these are the different conductors that you can use if you want. But it, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the program, it allows you to either select from the database, for example, anyone, or you can enter whatever diameter you want, 20 mm. All right, but I'm, I'm just gonna go back to this and change this to, uh, I mean, we don't want 8,000, this is too big. <laughs> All right, so let's say this is 8,000. All right, and we have the electro. So it tells you what is the minimum size of area you need and what is the minimum diameter of the, of the rod you need, depending on the short circuit. Now we go to the, uh, now well, let's build a grid, all right? So the grid, let's start with a rectangular grid and then see what we can do. But the program can model any shape of grid, all right? But let's start with a, with a simple rectangular grid, which you can define as X equals zero, Y is zero. Let's say X2, it's, a, it's not a very big grid, it's an 80 by 80. Now grid conductors parallel to X, I'm gonna say 11. Elements, I'm going to come back to these numbers and explain to you. And this is 11 wine. I'm, I, will, I will explain. A typical depth is 0 0.5 meters, let's say, or 0 0.6 meters. This is where your ground grid is. And the material I'm going to select from my database, copper and it, I'm going to say it's this conductor. It's 13.46 diameter conductor. All right. So, and the grid is built for you. Now, what did I tell you? I put 11 conductors parallel to X. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And 11 parallel to Y, if you do parallel to Y. Now, this is not really a very, I mean, it doesn't look like a square, but there is something in the settings that you can make it as a graph. You can make it as a, as a scaled area. So it becomes really an 80 by 80. But I like to use this one because it gives you a bit more, uh, you know, more room to work with. You know, you can see. All right, so I can use this now, but you can always have it as a scale when you want to do your reports. Now, and then I have a 3D view here that you can move around. Now, and the reports, of course, so data entry is on the left, reports on the right. Now let's do, we can do now what we call a grid analysis. It's very fast, so it did it, but you see it did only, and it did only like, it put something like 10 elements, you know, 22 elements. But this is finite element, and why don't you use this uh, idea that it's a finite element, then how come I cannot divide this further? because this is a ground grid is based on finite element method. So if I do 11 grid conductors and I have elements per conductor, what, but this is not an element. I mean, this is 80 meters is not an element. 80 meters is the whole conductor really 80 meters. So what about this element here? Because this is connected here. 
there's a connection here. There's a connection here. So connection here on all the T's, connection here, right? So this in rectangular shaped grid is always number of conductors parallel to X minus one. So this would be 10. So I have how many elements? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that will be 10. Now I'm ready to do a grid analysis. I'll do this and then I'll open it up for questions. If you have questions, let uh... So again, it did it. It found that the program says, okay, I have my upper layer, so on. So this one, it found my ground potential rise at almost 3000 volts, which is very good because based on standards, I guess, this should be something below, depending on the voltage, should be always below eight or 5,000 volts, depending on the company and the standard. So it's less than whatever, five, and, and the ground resistance is 0.35, less than one ohm. Sometimes they require less than two ohms or less than one ohm, but this, it looks good. And the current in each element, like this element is going from 0, 0 0.6 to from eight meters, right? To, from zero to eight meters. So this is the first length, eight meters in length. And it has 70 amps going through it to the ground. This is current, the short circuit current going through the ground. To, from this element to ground, it's 70 amps here. The second one, maybe there's only 56 amps going through, 58 amps. That's why it's called finite element, because each element has a role to play depending on where it is in the, in the grid. But is it safe? We don't know. So what we do? On true plot, we can do something like this. Let's say we go here and we'll see what, what we get. So this is the color coding. You see potential control plot. It tells me here that anything on this approaching this color here. So if you click here, you see now if there is a hand moving. My X, Y coordinate, X in this case is 34, Y is 4.3. And the voltage, the touch potential is 641 volts. So what is my tolerable? My maximum is 643. So if you go here, you see you at 854, 664. So all this area in red really is danger. This is marginal. Those guys here in, in between are marginal. So you have problems with this grid. You have to try and find a solution for it, okay? Do you want to explain something or I can continue? Yeah, I mean, uh, explain something. Ở trong phần này thì cũng uh, là nó hơi uh, khó một chút tại vì có rất nhiều thông xéo mà mình cần phải đưa vào. Nhưng mà về để ý thì uh, trong phần mềm sẽ giúp cho mọi người là có thể thứ nhất là view uh, trong dạng là 3D hoặc là 2D. Và trong các cái tính toán thì nó sẽ tính toán dựa trên cái um, giống như là uh, số lượng uh, về các cái thanh nối hoặc là các cái tiết diện và như một cái điện áp thì mình cũng phải uh, chú ý khi mà mình khai báo về các cái ví dụ như là bus về cái điện áp mình đặt vào trong cái hệ thống nó là chuẩn và thứ hai đó là các cái thông số về các cái khung uh, uh, tiếp điện nối đất các cái thông số về số lượng và chiều dài mình đưa vào uh, khi mà mình thấy fit với thực tế thì bắt đầu mình có thể so sánh vào trong uh, phần mềm để nhìn các cái dạng phần mềm thì ở trong các cái phần mềm thì họ cũng sẽ đưa các cái màu sắc thì thường là mọi người để ý là các cái màu đỏ trở lên đó là các cái màu nguy hiểm thì nghĩa là khi mà mình tính toán đưa các thông số vào mà mình thấy các cái điện áp mà người ta tính toán là điện áp có khả năng gọi là điện áp tăng lên khi mà chạm đất ạ thì khi mà mình thấy màu đỏ thì mình nên kiểm tra lại các cái phần tính toán và design xem nó có phù hợp hay không thì để cho cố gắng là đẩy nó được về các cái phần màu giữa từ màu vàng xuống màu xanh thì còn các cái phần mà từ màu đỏ đến màu xanh mà người thấy ở cái bảng than đo thì đây là những cái điện áp mà mức rất là nguy hiểm thì mình thấy đây người ta hay có trong ghi là uh, các cái điện áp bước và cái điện áp mà có thể cho phép ở trong uh, sau khi mà người ta làm các cái công tác phân tích và tính toán thì mình căn cứ vào các cái thông số này và cũng như các cái uh, tiêu chuẩn để mình thể đưa, đưa đưa ra thì ở đây dương có thấy một cái câu hỏi có một bạn đó nó là À, câu hỏi giữa tính toán thực tế và trên phần mềm có khác biệt nhiều hay không? 
Về thực ra thì cái câu hỏi này nó sẽ dựa vào trong một đó là cái việc mà mình collect thông tin có đầy đủ hay không và việc mà mình lấy mẫu có để đảm bảo được cho cái việc mà mô hình hóa cái phần sỏi đá cũng như là các cái vật liệu mà khi mình chôn ở dưới hay là các cái tiếp điện hay là các cái mô hình khung của hệ thống núi đất mình có làm chuẩn hay không khi mà mình đã làm chuẩn hay không thì sẽ có được cái kết quả giữa thực tế và trong mô phỏng gần như là tương đương thì cái phần này nó trong cái tài liệu mà lúc đấy bác ấy xong mọi người sẽ thấy coi xuống là đã có những cái người ta đã làm các cây study ở trong đó người ta đã làm rất nhiều người ta làm từng các cái cây và người ta so sánh kết quả giữa uh, tiêu chuẩn cho phép và kết quả tính toán từ phần mềm cũng như là thực tế ra mà bao nhiêu thì cái độ chính xác không vây nhiều thì mọi người có thể căn cứ dựa vào các cái cây cây ở trong thực tế mà mọi người đã từng gặp hoặc là cái cây mọi người thể làm lại và kiểm tra thì cái đấy nó cần cái sự kiểm tra của cái người sử dụng phần mềm và để có thể đánh giá thì cái phần này người ta cũng đã làm và đưa hẳn trong các cái report và trong cái tài liệu để kèm sau khi anh chị cài phần mềm ok đi chắc you can continue ok so one way of course is you can put the better material on top let's say for example yeah. right you can put something like this 4000 ok let's hear what it does <laughs> so you have to do your uh, soil analysis again because it allows you see your touch potential is higher now 927 volts this will this will help you and the contour plot now you don't have to do the grid analysis again because same resistance but you see now you're better okay you only have danger zones here on the corner And everything everywhere else is safe. Here it's margin. I mean, it's 890, it's still, you know, it's okay. But let's zoom here. You can do something like this. You can zoom on this area and you can check this area very closely. So you see it's 891. I mean, it's very, very marginal, you know? So you have to, I would, I would do something on this corner. So what you can do sometimes is, uh, where is this one? Is you can put something like small, conductors here and like and I'll do it on one to show you how to do it okay how to to you can add the conductors I mean all over but let's say I mean you can add it from here to here if you want but or you can do it this small but it doesn't really and I can show you how to do one and then you can you can figure it out so this is let's say we want to add conductors here so we can use conductors that are going from point A to point B because that's what I want to define I want to go a conductor from x equals zero y is 4 for example here this point x is 0 4 it is still at 0.6 i guess uh, symmetrically is it at 0.6 yes uh, x2 going to uh, maybe here it's about 8 i guess x2 is 8 y would be 4 by the way there is interface to autocad but i'm just showing you how to use this with the program and i'll, I'll you know i'll export it to autocad and bring it back and and you see what i mean So number of conductors, let's say this is one, of course, material, and we used, I guess, the uh, this one. So I have this conductor here. Now that you've done some, you can, of course, come here and say, okay, let me copy, come here, right click, and I can paste. But here you have to change, this is x, x1 is four, y1 would be zero, and x2 would be and x2 would still be four but y2 would be eight so we've done this little thing here so i can save the study and we can do a contour plot now again see no more danger zones here You can do the same thing on all those four corners here. You can. That that will alleviate, alleviate the problem. Or sometimes what they do, I'm going to show you another way. Well, I don't know if it's going to work, but you can do something like this. Let's say we can go here from uh, x is equal to this one. X is equal to 80 minus 72, I guess. Yeah. Now, y is 72. Uh, x is zero. Y is uh, 72, going to X equals minus, let's say minus two, sorry, uh, uh, 0.6 here. 
going to x2 minus 1, let's say, meter, and x2 will still be 72, and this was 0 0.6, 1, and copper and you have 4. So I put this small conductor here. I'll make it a bit bigger, let's say, minus, uh, minus 2 meters. All right. So and then you can you can you can build something like this. You know what I'm trying to say is here go like that if you want. All right. So you can go from here up there and that will work also. But this is the easiest way of doing it. All right. But these conductors you can add anywhere you want. You know they can. Uh, so so this one is maybe a conductor and then let's put let's put now some some rods on to show you how you can put rods. Just just for the fun of it to show you. Uh, how we can do this. Let's say I want to put rods here and here at the same time. So I can go one, two, let's say three, four, five, six rods. So here I can say, okay, you can define the whole area that you were talking about, let's say zero, zero, because you can add a whole two rows of rods, like see one and two rods at a rows at the same time. Rod of uh, rows pad to the X axis two, I have six of them. The length is typically, let's say, uh, five meters or three meters. Depth is connected to the grid. And it's, let's say, copper clad and it's three quarters inch. So if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I have here. Now, if you make this number to four, you have four rows, but that doesn't make sense. You know, you don't want to put rods in the middle. So we say, okay, this is two. Now, let me put the rods here, from here to here. So I say, okay. For this, you cannot use symmetrical, you say asymmetrical rods. I want to go from point A, which is X equals zero, Y equals eight, because don't start from here, because if you have two conductors overlapping, the program will stop. It will tell you you have, you have conductors overlapping. So 0 0.6 goes to X is still zero. This is a 72. And this is 0 0.6. Number of rods, I'm going to put here one, two, three, four. Four. You, this by default, you put one, one, because we know when the grid crosses. And the length is, uh, let's say, three meters. And copper clad, and it is three quarters inch. Let's put some on the uh, one, sorry, two, three, four. Ah, how did I do this? <laughs> I think I, I, I counted wrong. Maybe I should have started here. One, two. Okay, so I should put, pull them up a bit. So this is going from x equals 16, sorry. Uh, y is 16. And going to 80 minus 16 is 74, no, uh, 64. Yeah, so here we go. So these are the fours. I can copy. See, I'm selecting those. You see that in, 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 in yellow, I could say paste. Now, I'm, all I have to do is change the x to x instead of 0, x equals to 80, and x equals to, but look at the rods are going this way. So you can put them any way you want, but, but let's say we put that at 80. So now I have rods around here. I can do grid analysis, and you can do uh, contour plot again. So you see, it's very fast, the program. You can do multiple studies within an hour. And you see grid, graph, zoom extent. So here we go. It shows you everything that really is, is. I mean, the rods helped a bit. It dropped this, but because they didn't hit, they're good. They, they have a good voltage profile. They help you with the voltage profile. But you still have to do this trick where you put maybe X's here, X's here, X's here uh, to make it uh, work better. Okay, so uh, yeah. I think I've covered enough for today. Uh, you know, you can, of course, you can, uh, what, what is nice about it, you can say soil, uh, grid, electrode, uh, export to, for example, uh, AutoCAD, let me bring it into SimGrid, uh, where is my SimGrid development? SimGrid AutoCAD, and this is, call it uh, VIET. 
mặc dù thời gian cũng không nhưng nhưng mà cũng có thể nói thêm anh một cái tính năng trao đổi giữa Syncrit và AutoCAD là tương đối là thuận tiện nhưng ừ. anh chị có thể convert các cái thông tin à, từ hai chiều có thể lấy các bản vẽ từ uh, CAD uh, đẩy sang uh, Syncrit hoặc có thể chạy làm uh, ngược lại. So you, Thì, you can go here and say where's my AutoCAD 2018? I just exported it to uh, I call it VIET uh, seminar. So what you'll see now, it takes forever to load this, it takes a lot. Okay, so here we go. I go here, file, uh, open, drawing from the existing file. I go to SimGrid AutoCAD and I call VIET. I think it's this one. Continue opening, and there you go. This is exactly the grid, uh, the the grid I created. You know, you have all your rods and so on and so forth it, there's a special layer that you have to use uh, in SimGrid, which is called you know it comes with the primary layers and so on so if you and let's say we want to add some more lines you say line you come here click here for example now your grid is taking a, a different shape here then going to here shape All right, so uh, I can do file. You have to save it. Save. And you go back to uh, SimGrid. You go back to SimGrid and say, OK, uh, grid, electrode, import from whatever I was. I guess this is the one. OK. So this is all the stuff I have added, the new one. All the conductors I've added uh, using Slime Grid. And now you can do the analysis, I guess, with the with this with this new uh, everything is there for you. I guess the buses, the electro, the symmetrical, asymmetrical rods, and everything should be should be there for you. So I can do grid apply study grid. All right, let me move this one back up here. And you can do a contour plot, and it gives you a contour plot of everything within the within the boundaries of the grid. Of course, it's going to be very dangerous here, but you expect that maybe this is a building, you know, that you ground it around, and nobody's really touching any metallic structure. If there's any metallic structure in it, it will also be grounded, so you'll be safe as well. So. And you're also standing on concrete, so. Uh, I guess that's, okay. uh, we can open it up for questions. <laughs> uh, yes, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Selos, uh, Richard. I, I know it is quite late from your side, so I uh, will try to pick one or two questions only, uh, and after that, <laughs> okay. You, so can, I, you I can, think... know what, you, you can send them to me by email. Uh, you, let's answer one or two now, you're right, and then, Send them to me by email to Sebastian, and I will answer them in writing for you. Uh, yes, okay. So I think I want to uh, to this question. Uh, he asked, uh, uh, he would like to check if the SimRig uh, support for design the earthing system for the wind turbine uh, or not? Yes, yes, it can. So I'm going to show on the project now that uh, does this. Uh, let me see something. Uh, at, uh, Grid, uh, where is it? He added something tie up the system with the cycle. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is like a wind turbine system. Okay. They have a grid here, collector grid. They have designed it. In fact, they have done two layers of grid, on the one on top of each other, as you can see. If you look at it here. Uh, yeah, so when you go there, 
So that's the grid they designed here. And they also went all through the turbine, all of them. They connected them together. So here is one. Let me show you where's the one turbine. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, here. See, that's one of the turbine bases. They did that, something like this for it. And this is another one. Oh, uh, I can't take it. Uh, here. Here's Did another you one. Uh, do uh, this kind of project uh, have in the tutorial or uh, in the sample of the software? Uh, we we have exercises, yes, to, to allow you to do it. I guess I sent one to uh, Sebastian the other day. Yeah, there is some tutorials that you can do it. So oh, if you do it, I think if you do a good analysis. Uh, so câu trả lời cho mình thấy rất là nhiều bạn hỏi câu hỏi các anh chị hỏi câu hỏi đó là có mô phỏng được lưới đặc biệt hình tròn hay không thì câu trả lời là có mọi người có thể thấy ở trên cái hình này thì sau buổi này thì dương cũng đã cấp cho các anh chị tham gia các cái lesson khoảng đó ba tuần thì trong thời gian này anh chị có thể trải nghiệm và trong thời gian đấy có thể đồng hành cùng bstf và dương để xem trong quá trình các anh chị trải nghiệm và anh chị thử xem có vấn đề gì có thể feedback lại và mình cùng có thể thảo luận và trao đổi thì còn câu trả lời cho là có mô phỏng được các dạng lưới hình tròn rồi là nối liên tục với nhau không thì câu trả lời là có nhưng mà có thể thấy là trên hình ảnh also uh, yeah. the question comes we can also do uh, pv parks as well that's a pv see this is the row of pvs pvs you know the where they put all the pvs on the system like you know on racks they all the racks are grounded so this is like a pv wind farm as well uh, pv uh, sorry photovoltaic so this i mean this is like almost 500 meters from here to here you know it's almost 600 and about uh, 30 meters from here to here and you can do this one i mean the nice thing about when you do the grid analysis It's already done, so we have to do something uh, very small. Let me just do some change, a small change here. Okay, add it. So we do a grid analysis here. Uh, mind you, the current is very is very low, but that's what it is. So they were able to do it, and you get a nice, pretty look at what what uh, what the contour plot will look like. You know, it's very safe, of course. Như vậy là mình đã mở rộng là từ trạm điện mình đã sang đến là các cái tua pin gió và bây giờ mình đã thêm sang là các cái cũng có thể là các cái hệ thống về solar mình có thể tính toán tiếp điện bằng phần mềm này. Uh, hey, Richard, a question more is uh, our system that pin can calculate uh, for the station for the wind turbine for the solar farm. How about yeah. for the medium voltage system and low voltage system? Can we can our software yeah. can calculate? Yes, of course. I mean, for the bigger well, uh, system. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter really. You can do a big sub substation, whatever it is, uh, because the program really uh, can handle anything. You know, any substation. Uh, so not any, so any any grounding installation can be handled by the program, whether it's big, whether it's small. One because you know, some, uh, it is at the power company level. That means uh, at grid level, not only limit to the substation. That means uh, the uh, medium voltage system and uh, low voltage system. Of uh, a province or a bigger area. Uh, how big of an area? I see a question from like uh, like uh, like a power company in Vietnam. They say that if our software can apply for the earthing system or the uh uh lining prevent uh, system uh, of the MV or LV system. Uh, on substations or what mm -hmm. bigger in substation some, in the system yeah it's a grid system at the grid level yeah. yeah yeah no problem i don't see what 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 prevents it from doing it yeah yeah okay so uh we will come back to that question uh, later when i have collect more detail and uh, send yeah, yeah. To À, về có một câu hỏi về cái lưới điện nó rộng hơn một tí thì chắc là Dương sẽ có lấy thêm thông tin uh, uh, để có thể gửi với bác uh, Richard để có cái sự tư vấn nó cụ thể hơn uh, uh, chắc là Dương sẽ chọn câu hỏi cuối uh, I will choose one last question uh, for you Richard uh, please wait for no me uh, 
À, ok, I, I see. Uh, phải, uh, cảm ơn anh Khương. Có một câu hỏi cũng rất là hay thì Dương cũng muốn. Tại vì uh, giống như anh chị nhiều lúc mình đi tính chất điện mà nó đang gặp cái cảm giác là không an toàn. Thì uh, one question is when they, uh, they do for the earthing system and they want to do some the um, uh, chemical uh, uh, media uh, to reduce for the red system. Uh, can our software can calculate for that? For which system? Sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, they win uh, because something they uh, 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 calculate and they see it is uh, not good enough and they use some for the uh, for some um, uh, chemical. Yeah. Uh, encasing material. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. All right, good, good. Now I got it. Thank you. So yeah. And the parameters, you know, in the grid parameters, you can specify conductor encasement resistivity. Let's say we put this at, uh, let me go back to the old studies. We had this better. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So this is the case we built, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so this is the case we built. And what we can do now, every, every, every uh, in the soil grid parameters, actually, you can say here, let me put this concrete encased material. It's two ohm meters normally. Actually, sometimes it could be as low as one. All right. Now, everything is going to be, of course, uh, refreshed now. But this is what what it does. This is what you mean. You need some enhancement material on this around this uh, grid. This is the rod, so we can have a circular type of material around it, or uh, you can have for the horizontal conductors also. So SimGrid handles both. So the horizontal conductor, you can put conductor, you can put some material around it. So how do we specify those? So let's go for the uh, asymmetrical conductors or the symmetrical conductor. Let's start with the whole thing. All you have to do is say, okay, it's material encased, yes. So now it disappears because now you have to define more information. Let's say it's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. This is what I mean by it. I'm going to go back to my presentation. And this is what, what we do. Yeah. This is the upper width, lower width, and material thickness. Because sometimes the trench might not be a full rectangle, you know? But we assume that it is a rectangle, right? Let's assume it is a rectangle. And this is the material thickness of, the, uh, of this material, of this... Uh, enhancement material okay and this is my rod and this is the, what, what's around it okay so if, if you go back to the to the sim grid so i i define now all the conductors here all of them have some material around it you go back to the uh let's say to the rods and you do the same thing and this is the material thickness let's say it's uh i don't know uh, ooh, uh 50 mm Five, five, cent, five centimeters thickness. That's for the rod. Asymmetrical rods, you can do the same thing. This and this, and you can say how much it is, 50 and 50. Right? Asymmetrical conduct. If you want for the asymmetrical conductors, then you can do this, right? Okay. Right, right. Then we can say this is, say, 100. So 10 by 10 by 10, which is typical, really. And I think you can do control C. Control V, Control V, and Control V. So you copy, why is not this one? He didn't like it, why? He didn't like this entry. Which one is this one? Uh, 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 what's this? Which one are those anyway? I don't see them. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. So let me. See. I don't know where the hell they are. Because <laughs> normally it should it should uh, light it up for me. It should show me where it is. Uh, this is ten, eighteen, seventy-nine. Oh, this is the small one. Okay. Oh, these are the small ones I entered, right? Okay. Anyway, so I'll, I'll figure it out later. So if we do this. Uh, run the analysis now. And you can do the, you see it, it, it drops the GPR and the resistance goes down. 
but more importantly, it will affect the contour. The contour plot now you see is even a lot of, look at this potential here is that 110 volts, even without adding any, you remember we had some problems here and some danger points here, but by adding the, this material, has made the, the grid very, very safe, actually. If you look here, the voltage is 581. Here it's 425. Here it's 140, you know, so in, in 387. So by doing this, you can, uh, uh, you know, you can tr treat the, the soil with this material. Yeah. Uh, if I do a potential line. Yeah, like that, you can see that the mềm, 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 the thì như vậy again thì cũng tất cả thì khi mà sử dụng phần mềm thì chăm nghe không bằng mắt thấy và cũng như là thực hành thì đấy thì trong thời gian ba tuần tới thì khi mong là anh chị có thời gian để trải nghiệm và cũng có thể những câu hỏi feedback lại thì các anh chị có thể điền vào các cái form đấy và gửi lại cho chỗ anh thức và dương và nếu mà gửi bằng tiếng anh được thì càng tốt bởi vì thực ra thì dương cũng gọi là cũng hiểu nhưng mà cũng không thể chuyên sâu bằng các anh chị thì các anh chị gửi bằng tiếng anh thì lúc đấy thì dương cũng sẽ dễ gọi làm việc với đội ngũ kỹ thuật hơn thì nhưng mà anyway thì, thì các cái việc mà uh, các câu hỏi đấy thì cả các đội ngũ kỹ sư của bên PSTS và Dương cũng cùng hỗ trợ và đồng hành cùng các anh chị thì các anh chị cứ gửi các thông tin lại thì các câu trả lời ngày hôm nay do uh, thứ nhất là hơi là khuya ở bên Mỹ và thứ hai là thời gian cũng có hạn nên là cũng chưa thể đi hết được các câu hỏi của các anh chị thì Dương cũng sẽ nốt lại và sẽ trả lời các anh chị trong thời gian nào sớm nhất thì uh, Uh, okay, um, uh, thank you so a lot, um, Richard. I think it is uh, very useful and uh, the clear instruction uh, to us uh, for today. And uh, we uh, will collect all the question and uh, uh, I will send uh, you uh, later. And uh, thanks again very much because it is quite late to you now. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Thank you for arranging this. And uh, I hope, you know, uh, it will be a good success for you to promote the software in Vietnam. Uh, yes, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, th thank you, Richard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, anyway, I'm I'm looking forward to see you for you to send me the uh, the uh, uh, questions and I can answer them for you. Well, have a good uh, rest of the day. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks, Richard. Have a good night. Take care. Bye. Yeah. No yeah, problem. Yeah. Take care, Silver. Yeah. Take care. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night to you. Dạ, thì cũng cảm ơn tất cả các anh, các anh chị đã đã tham gia hội thảo ngày hôm nay thì thì như anh Dương đã thông tin thì uh, về câu hỏi rồi anh chị có thể gửi lại thông tin email hoặc là số điện thoại thì đã đội ngũ kỹ thuật đội ngũ ban tổ chức có thể gửi tài liệu uh, về các tài liệu về video rồi slide chương trình ngày hôm nay ạ. À. một lần nữa rất là cảm ơn các anh chị rất nhiều và hy vọng mình sẽ gặp nhau trong khoảng 1 đến 2 tháng tới thì Dương cũng sẽ uh, xin uh, sẽ tổ chức những chủ đề phù hợp với các anh chị thì trong cái phần feedback các cái form mà anh thức gửi tới các anh chị thì anh chị có có thể đề xuất những cái chủ đề mà các anh chị quan tâm thì uh, từ phía Dương Dương sẽ cố gắng là chọn lựa cái các chủ đề mà được nhiều anh chị quan tâm nhất thì mình cũng sẽ gặp nhau ở trong thời gian tới và một lần nữa cảm ơn các anh chị rất là nhiều à, cảm ơn các anh chị ạ